Hey guys, welcome back to another wicked episode of The Last Game Hunter. And I'm building, or I should say, changing from this monster. Yeah, what a size of a case. I wasn't kidding when I said beer fridge. And this was put out in 2006 from Thermaltake. It's the Mozart TX. Uh, I am not getting rid of it because this case was bought around the same time my daughter Haley was born. So I have sentimental value. So I think I'm going to build my vintage computer in it as it does fall into the era. So guys, what am I doing? So I'm going to review the Cooler Master G100M RGB cooling system. I figured now is a good time to put it in the new build. So sit back, relax, let's find out what this is all about. Does it cool better than the uh, Cooler Master 212 that I have on it now? Let's find out. Hey okay, guys, what is unique about the Cooler Master G100M? Well, for starters, it's a low profile cooling system. So as a disclaimer, I want you guys to know if you're watching this video and you think that this cooler is for you, make sure you don't have high memory. Because this being low profile, your memory will have to go underneath the orb. Okay? So moving on, it's RGB lit. It actually has, I think, an RGB controller in here, but we'll know that in a few minutes. Uh, also, it is pure copper center core. Now, what does that do for you? Well, it's the best possible way of taking heat from your cooling system, but it's not a fast dissipator. So on the outside, they have the aluminum fins coming off the copper, and that is your rapid dissipation of heat. So what we need to find out is, for $50 Canadian, is this better than a $30 Cooler Master 212. It sure does look cooler. Let's see. Okay, so let's unbox this bad boy. Nicely packaged with the foam in there. I thought that was kind of cool. Take that out first. Not crazy heavy. Find out what's inside. Okay, so we have the manual instructions to basically what parts do what based on what system, because this will do everything from AMD, uh, AM2, I believe, all the way up to Ryzen, and all of Intel, all the way up through as well. So this cooler has been very uh, well packaged and versatile for what you're going to throw at it. Okay, so in this bag, you have a back plate. And I'm gonna say chances are this could be for AMD. Probably the Ryzen overall. Of course you have different screws and everything based on what's going to be used. And they actually did pack it with the Cooler Master Thermal, uh, I'm gonna say uh, one of the best greases out there. So it's, a, it's like an Arctic Silver. In fact, it probably is Arctic Silver. Um, can't verify that. <laughs> So don't quote me, but I know this stuff works very well. I'm very, very happy to use Cooler Master products. Just also want to note that I am not sponsored or endorsed in any way. Right from when I owned my computer stores and I was building gaming machines, yes, my cooler compound of choice was Arctic Silver, and my cooler, uh, the cases of choice, whether they be brushed aluminum or whatever they were at the time, were definitely Cooler Master. I know that I have a, a thermal take case. But that was only because at the time I had a 1200 watt power supply that weighed a ton. And when I put it in a Cooler Master all aluminum, it started to pull the aluminum. So I needed something with an actual support rail, and the Thermal Take TX was the only one that did that at the time. You do have a module in here for your lighting control with an actual button to change the colors and modes of your uh, unit. So I'm going to see if this actually works to run some more lighting inside this case. And if not, I'll have to add a uh, different module. Now for the moment of moments. This is actually my first time looking at it too. I just realized that when I remembered and read the book that it was low profile and read everything online, I could not use it for my other build, which was very disappointing. Okay, so looking it over, it's not a very heavy cooling system which actually is pretty nice considering that whole center core is copper. And you can see that here 
So the whole thing is a copper core, solid all the way down like a cylinder, right through the whole cooling system. And then you have your aluminum cooling out here for your rapid dissipation of heat. So in my opinion, probably one of the best designs for heat distribution, not being a big, huge, bulky fan. So I'm impressed with that. It looks like a UFO. Sorry, got carried away. But it looks like a UFO in every which way and it's actually been referred to as a UFO cooler. So guys, let's put this up to the test. Let's find out if it makes a cooler system over the Cooler Master 212. Okay guys, so we have the test bench set up. We have the Cooler Master cooler on here now, the original one. We're now going to test the uh, temps in the BIOS and then we'll swap over and test the temps on the new cooler. So let's fire this bad boy up. Okay guys, so here we go. We have the cooling system mounted. As you can see here, it's lit up red. My favorite thing to light up. But the module, it's kind of hidden right here. It does do uh, a whole bunch of different features where you have your dimming, uh, so you can actually dim it down. It's really cool because it looks like the fan is hardly moving when you dim it. And then back, back to normal. Um, different colors. Very cool, a lot of different colors and then different modes. Now the one thing that I have to talk about, I'm going to continue to use it because it, I guess in one way it looks great, it really does. Um, but as I'm about to show you, I let this run for a lot longer than the other one thinking that the Arctic Silver compound that I had between the cooler and the chip needed to uh, sit for a while and spread or, or you know, start dissipating heat, heat differently than when you factory, you know, put it on there. And this CPU cooler is definitely running hotter than the other Cooler Master Cooler. So guys, here you go. You can see that the uh, CPU is running at 35, whereas I believe the other one was running at 30. And the CPU fan, of course, is running at 1427 right now. The other one was just running over 1000. Uh, 30 degrees on the motherboard, and I think the overall system temperature with the other fan was around 28, if I'm remembering correctly. So overall, the CPU temperature is not bad. It's about, I'm gonna call it average if you're running a high-end stock cooler. So it's not that the, uh, the, the cooler is not cooling well, it's not cooling as well as the cheaper cooling system. So sometimes, cool ain't cool. Thank you, my brother. My brother gave me that one. So guys, that concludes my review and test of this cooler. I will give you my thoughts overall, uh, cons and pros. Cons are, of course, if you have high memory sticks, this is not for you. Pros, I did find there's a lot more space between the RAM and the cooler than I expected, but still not enough to clear RGB cool, uh, heat sinks. Um, the build. Now I've built a lot of custom or aftermarket coolers, put them together, mount them to the board and so on, and didn't have to pay a lot of attention to the instructions. Make sure you pay attention to the instructions on this one. Very, very needed. I was completely off when I started doing it, wondering what this did and what that did. There's a lot of different little things, uh, especially specifically for the AMD and which version of the AMD you're mounting. Um, there is a little bit of a hum to this cooler. Uh, I'm blaming a bit of it on the fact that the box is loose, but even when I hold it down, like put pressure on it, there's still a bit of a hum. Quiet, not enough to say that there's an annoyance or anything. It's not something you're really gonna hear, but it definitely adds to the ambient sound of your overall build. Um, 
if you're looking for a cooler to cool better, then go with the $30 Cooler Master 212. It's a high cooler, pretty much, you know, copper going into the aluminum as well, but maybe due to the height and the bigger fan, not having to spin as much, it definitely cools it better by about five to six degrees better. Overall, the system board temperature, in this case, increased up to 30, I believe over 28, which also leads me to believe that the cooler was sending out air across the board much better on the 212. So in my professional opinion, the 212 from Cooler Master is definitely a better cooling system. If you're looking for something that's gonna look cool, but not be as cool, then by all means, it's not going to overheat your processor, you're not gonna have any issues, it's just gonna go up a little then grab a G100M. You guys, till next time, please share, like, and subscribe. And this has definitely been a bit of fun. And it's now game over.